On April 10th of this year, a Bell 206L4 helicopter came apart over the Hudson River, and we've covered that on this channel uh, in several videos. And uh, we had a guest on with us last month, uh, Colonel Joe Yanessa, and uh, he's returning with us now. I'm very excited to have him here because the NTSB report is out, and uh, Colonel Joe and I have both had a chance to take a look at it. He's the expert. I'm guessing at a lot of this stuff. So, uh, Colonel Joe, it's good to have you with us again uh, on the Captain Steve uh, network here. And uh, I just want to uh, tell everybody about your background real quick and to refresh their memories. You're a Marine Corps uh a uh, helicopter pilot, 30 years experience. You flew the Huey uh, back in the day, as they say, and that was probably the, the grandparent to the Bell 206. You've even got some experience with the Bell 206. Uh, you're much more of an expert on uh, helicopters than I'll ever be, that's for sure. And uh, and you served our country for a lot of years. So, it, number one, thank you for your service. Uh, but we want to jump right into this. Uh, when we talked last month, uh, everybody was talking about mass pumping, right? And you got it right, right from the beginning, because the NTSB report now is ruling out mass pumping altogether. So I don't really want to spend any time on that. Uh, something happened to that helicopter now. And as you've had a chance to look at the pictures of the wreckage and the NTSB report, what do you see? Well, besides a, a sad day for a family and a pilot, um, I saw a catastrophe. I saw the type of thing that is probably the one in a million, um, one in a million catastrophe when an airplane comes apart so suddenly that the pilot really doesn't have any options on how to handle it. And I do, after I saw the film, I realized that it all came apart in a half a second, or at least a, a millisecond. And when those things happen, the first thing you think about is if the pilot didn't do anything wrong to make it happen, you have to lean on some sort of mechanical failure, a catastrophic mechanical failure. And when I first saw the film, and I saw that it came apart in literally less than a second, and you can see the tail boom separate. Now, from the picture, you can't see how much of the tail boom separates. And then you see the, um, the mast with the transmission separates from the cabin, and all that happens in milliseconds. So without jumping to too much of a conclusion, you have to say the tail boom failed. I don't see it as any other possibility at this time. Uh, there are some incidents, depending on uh, uh, droop in a, in a uh, in a mast, you could have a separation where the one of the rotors hits the tail boom and that comes off. But even that, you would see it. It would be clearly. This clearly, the tail boom separated and they wouldn't know until it hit the ground and pulled the wreckage out how much of the tail boom. So I was very interested to see the pictures when they did pull the wreckage out that the, uh, it was not where it's bolted to the cabin. The tail boom, um, you know, what's that? Maybe eight, 10 inches beyond where the tail boom separated. So that leans towards metal fatigue of some sort. That's great. That, that is very helpful to me because it didn't, uh, the tail didn't separate from where it attaches to the main part of the fuselage. It, it, it right. was one row of rivets back. And we're going to take a look at a right. picture of that in just a minute. But before we get to that, a lot of people in the comments yeah. have been saying um, two things. One is, oh, the transmission came apart and that's what happened. And, and I think that's kind of one of the first things, but there's nothing in the NTSB report to indicate that there was a transmission failure. If anything, yeah. you, you know, as we're still kind of getting our feel for what happened, it seems like a metal fatigue issue in the tail of the aircraft. And mm -hmm. in addition to that, there was this, uh, several people have been talking about these 
uh, aftermarket rotor blades, the main rotor blades, the Van Horn blades that are a composite mm -hmm. material. And I think there was an airworthiness concern bulletin that came out not too long ago about these blades possibly causing a, the aircraft to bump. Uh, and that may explain that last 25 or 50 feet of altitude that they gained at the last minute as the tail was coming off the aircraft. Any thoughts mm -hmm. about the, um, the blades? Now, I'm not familiar with those particular blades, but from the appearance of the film, it doesn't indicate that that was the cause. And even if the blades did, it would probably be not in a half a second. Uh, that first half second very clearly shows a nose pitch up with the tail, uh, tail boom separation. And I don't think that the uh, mass, the rotors would have had anything to do with it. Now, granted, I'm, I'm saying that from not knowing about these rotors, but I didn't see that kind of evidence from the film and uh, in that one to two seconds, it didn't happen that way. That was a tail boom failure. And for those who say, well, the aircraft changed 25 or 50 feet, um, no tail rotor, e even if the pilot was adding a little bit of power, that would not cause a tail boom failure. And like I have said to other folks uh, in the military, and I think most helicopter pilots in training, you train with full rotor left and right as a accident or as a preventive uh, procedure to study. So even if that pilot for some reason hit a wind gust and pushed the left or right, the pilot did not cause the boom to come apart. Uh, that, uh, and that's why I, n I never like to make an absolute uh, decision about something till a final report is out. And there's always that one in a, a billion thing. But this was, I believe, strongly going to come down to metal fatigue around that separation. Now, and and remember what that pilot's doing at the time. He's uh, he's looking down at the ground. He's giving five people a tour, uh, and a difference of twenty-five or fifty feet in a helicopter that doesn't have autopilot. Um, I just don't see any any value in in even putting that in there as as a cause. Uh, it may have been the final when he maybe added a little bit of power, but that was an accident that was going to happen, and it just happened at that time. That's my belief from both the NTSB sighting and my own visual uh, watching the film. Yeah, I, I agree. That's That was kind of my take on it, but I, I, I like to get the confirmation from somebody that knows more about what yeah. they're talking about, that the airplane, the aircraft just, it came apart. And and metal fatigue, in my opinion, is the most likely one. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wanted so the other question we've been getting here at the at the channel is yeah. this: uh, What about the Jesus bolts? All right, uh, what Joe? What are the Jesus bolts? Well, um, it's every different model uh, in a helicopter probably has some of those critical bolts that are holding <laughs> the most critical part of the aircraft together. Now, obviously, tail booms are attached to the fuselage, and that is by no means um, anything that is done haphazardly. So you call that the critical, uh, a critical aspect uh, of the attachment, just like the mast the mass boom and the Jesus nut, as we say in some helicopters, holding the mass down. It's all held together and connected. Like in this case, the transmission came out with the rotor. So uh, that was all intact. But going back to the, to the boom, um, <clears throat> if, one bo if one nut holding the tail boom 
if it starts to come apart, it's, it's recoverable because pilots are trained to feel that vibration in the rudders. So if it's starting to come apart and you, you'll feel it in the rudders and you can land, you, you, you will practice landing. Uh, in this case, it all came apart and not even at the bolts. And that's why when I, these are so few and far between, but it always goes to metal fatigue. And in the NTSB report, they said this had just shy of 13,000 hours of flight time. So I would be critically asking, how, when was that last maintenance done? Were x-rays done on that part of the cabin, that part of the tailbone? And, and I'm sure the NTSB now in the future weeks and months, that that will be some of the critical aspects they have to look at is the maintenance of the aircraft. Uh, I mean, I, I hate to say that's logical because a lot of times air, aircraft accidents are, are reviewed for a long while and small pieces of information keep coming about. I think this will be a lot quicker. Hmm. I uh, th it's fascinating that you said that. Uh, so I, there's more than one Jesus bolt. There's several of them. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but they're they're named by us. You know, it's it's you know I, I don't know what you call them in uh, seven something seven, but um, you know we know where the critical parts are. And like on the mast uh, um, uh, servos to control the mass. Um, you know, you don't want to lose a servo. Um, uh, so there are critical parts in every aircraft. Anything that flies has critical parts. But remember, somebody once said a helicopter is uh, 50,000 parts all moving in object to one another, against one another, uh, and it still flies. Um, but but I, I believe these helicopters are unbelievably safe. I believe Bell has made, you know, I've flown Cobras too, Cobras uh, um, and the Huey and different models of it and the Ranger in flight school and very safe, very safe. But we also have had excellent maintenance and, and I, can knock, I can say our Navy and Marine Corps brother and we're... Uh, we're very ben we benefited by having great maintenance people. That's all I can say. Yeah, and we uh, we knew it in the military as like depot level maintenance. The aircraft got to a certain yeah. amount of hours on it, and it would just they yeah. would take it away. It would get torn apart mm -hmm. completely, put back together. Yep. The main yep. wing spars and the tail spars and everything. They'd get sure. X-rayed to see if there were any of those hairline cracks. I'm not yeah. sure whether this went through that level of maintenance. But here's my question to you: Just short yeah. of thirteen thousand hours on this <clears throat> type of helicopter, is that a lot of yeah. hours? I it's. Uh, I like the way you said it earlier. It's no spring chicken. Um, and, and that's probably how I would see it. And I don't have a problem with the turbine engines because they are, uh, again, though, they are looked at. And the older they are, the more regular, you know, just like all aircraft, the older they are, it reduces the amount of time between mandatory inspections and types of mandatory inspections. So I would say at 13,000 uh, hours on, on that helicopter, it probably needed more full-time regular inspections. Okay, that's that's fascinating to me. Um, I wanted to. We're going to show the audience now uh, some of these grainy photos yeah. from the NTSB report. We reviewed them on the last video, uh -huh. but the aircraft comes apart in three parts. Uh, the tail boom comes off first. Uh, it says on the NTSB report that the uh, fuselage yaws severely. Uh, I think what I'm hearing from you, Joe, is that uh, the pilot really couldn't have induced that much yaw that severely mm -hmm. to cause the tail to come off. It's most likely the tail was coming off and that's what caused the yaw. Then as the yeah. aircraft is basically disintegrating, the, the rotor and the transmission pull out of the top. Separate. Separate. Mm -hmm. And they now you've got three distinct parts and the, and the aircraft is no longer flying. Uh, now, the picture right. that we're all looking at on the screen, and I, I want you to 
your expert eyes to take a look at this. Now, let me explain what I'm looking at, and then uh, I'm going to correct mm. something I said on the last video. Uh, I tried yeah. to get a little too clever because for me, when I, I go this way to my left, it's actually screen right. And when I go to my right, it's screen left. And I was explaining that mm. uh, that particular Bell helicopter has a counter-rotating uh, rotor on the top, which is going to cause the nose mm -hmm. to come to the left so that the tail rotor has to push thrust out to the right, uh, which mm -hmm. if there was a breakage, it would cause that tail rotor to break off in this direction to the left because it's thrusting to the right. I think I explained it going out this way. I, I just got it backwards because I was trying to get too fancy right. with the camera. But as we're looking at the picture here, you can see over on the left side of the fuselage, we're looking from the top to the bottom as we would if we yeah. were just standing right mm -hmm. next to the aircraft, the left side of that tail boom is just a neat line of rivets. You can even see where the paint was mm -hmm. and then where the paint wasn't, where the rivets were. And to me, uh, Colonel, I see that as kind of the hinge. In other words, the what if there was metal fatigue, it, it cut loose on the right side of the tail boom. Mm -hmm. And then as the tail rotor thrusting in this direction pushes that tail out right where you see all those rivets there was a temporary hinge and then that thrust out there just popped all those rivets cleanly no. and the whole thing yeah. departs what's uh what do you see here i can't disagree with your assumption um again uh when those rivets pop that's the noise that i'm certain people heard on the ground because when those when it, that kind of power on, on 10 or 11 rivets, that's, uh, that's going to make a loud boom. And then, this, and then the other boom, I'm certain with the rotor system and the transmission coming apart, the, uh, you know, I can see another uh, boom there. But, um, but I, I do think you're, you're, now that you've corrected yourself uh, by the air, I, I do think you're right on. Um, there's nothing there. But again, uh, my heart goes out to the family and goes out to the pilot because yeah, I think any pilot, any professional pilot like yourself, you know that you practice for you practice for events that you can do something about. And you always pray as a pilot that when I'm called upon in an emergency, I will save myself and my crew, my passengers, because I know how to handle an emergency. And my empathy for this family and for the pilot is he was handled, he was handled in a no recovery situation. Yeah, that's, uh, it, that's what makes this a true tragedy. It really does. And I yeah. think, you know, ultimately people tune into this channel to say, is it safe to go flying? Is it safe to take a tour uh, in a helicopter? And yeah. I think the answer is yes, absolutely. Yes. You know, the, sure. if you if you try to live life and avoid the one in a million or the one in a billion thing that's going to happen, there's no way to avoid that. Um, yeah. But I think ultimately uh, it was uh, no spring chicken. Uh, maybe they could have done some things better. We're going to see in the final NTSB report when it comes out yeah. the, the full report on everything that, that took place. Uh, but Colonel Joe, I appreciate you joining us today because this is an education yeah. for me. And I feel like I'm learning a lot more about helicopters uh, and my knowledge base is basically about zero <laughs> up to this point. And, uh, and a little bit about metal fatigue here as well. So I want to thank you for joining us. I think this is fascinating for our audience. And again, our hearts go out to the, the people who are lost in this tragedy. And again, at, at, here at Captain Steve, we, we actually pray for people. We really do. And my producer and I sit down. We spend time you know, praying for these folks. And I would encourage yeah. our, our audience to do the same. So, Joe, thank you again for joining us. I, I, you know what? I'd like to have you back under other circumstances. Maybe it won't be a crash uh, next time. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about uh, something to do with helicopters that's a little more lighthearted. But uh, Colonel Joe Yanessa, thank you so much for joining us join us today. And uh, it was great to have Colonel Joe. So folks, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I fumble around a little bit with some of these things, especially when it comes to helicopters. Uh, but Colonel Joe is very helpful and he's a wealth of knowledge. And he helped us uh, understand that this is a one in a million uh, deal. And it's most likely that the, the aircraft failed. 
Uh, most likely, we don't know for sure, but it most likely failed right at that uh, part of the tail where the, you saw that clean line of rivets and uh, sadly everybody was lost in this. Well, I'm gonna finish off by saying, well, now you know, I'm Captain Steve, fly safe.